for Oxley. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Upholding human rights is a virtue that members of this place and the wider Australian community have always seen as a cornerstone to a well-respected and functioning democracy. However, unfortunately, this isn't so in other countries around the world. Earlier this week, I attended a briefing with Human Rights Watch Director, uh, Director uh, Alan Pearson and the Vietnamese Overseas Initiative for Conscience Empowerment Executive Director, Mr Hoi Trin, to learn more about the human rights atrocities being committed in Vietnam. My electorate of Oxley has one of the highest number of Vietnamese people anywhere in the country, many of which I'm very proud to call my close friends. They are loyal, hardworking and dedicated members of the community who make an invaluable contribution to the Australian way of life. I work closely with a number of Vietnamese organisations, including the Queensland chapter of the Vietnamese Community Association with my close friend Dr Kong Bui and the Vietnamese Senior Citizens Association. Through these organisations and their members, I am already aware of the continued attacks on Vietnamese people who campaign for human rights. As a result, I've previously written to the Foreign Minister, Julie Bishop, regarding these violations against human rights activists and seeking that Australia do more to see that these people are protected. Last week, I also had the honour of speaking at the opening of the International Youth Movement for Human Rights Conference in Sydney before 300 young activists. Conference speakers include, included representatives from the United Nations, Amnesty International and social campaigners, all striving for the same goal of a pathway to humanity in, for freedom in Vietnam. This will be a long and difficult struggle for those bearing the cost of human rights violations. At the briefing this week with Ms Pearson and Mr Trinh, we heard stories of the atrocities being committed every day in Vietnam. In their recent report, No Country for Human Rights, the organisation listed examples of horrific crimes committed to people merely seeking justice. This included human rights act activist Nguyen Van Dai, when on the morning of December 6, 2015, he delivered a lecture at Van Lok Parish in Nam Dan District in celebration of International Human Rights Day about the rights enshrined in Vietnam's constitution. That afternoon, he left for Hanoi, accompanied by fellow activists Lee Kwang Sung, Vu Van Min and Lee Man Thung. During the course of the journey, the taxi was forcibly stopped by a group of, dozen, of a dozen men wearing civilian clothing disguised by surgical masks. Nguyen Van Dai said the men dragged them out of the taxi and severely beat them. Three other activists were also violently beaten. Madam Deputy Speaker, it's stories like this and much worse that I've been told that prove the need for greater protection for human rights activists in Vietnam. I'll continue to work closely with my local Vietnamese community and the Australian Vietnamese community to see an end to these terrible acts of violence. Thank you.